Hey there, it's me Ilham and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be about a rather interesting GNU Linux distribution called Void Linux. Void is a standalone distribution, meaning it's not based on anything like Arch, Debian, Gentoo, etc. Void is its own thing, it has its own repository of software and it has its own package manager called XPPS, which stands for X Binary Packaging System, if I'm not mistaken. You can get a couple uh, different versions of Void. You can get it with glibc, which is the GNU C libraries, or Muscle, M-U-S-L basically, which is an alternative to glibc. It's a lot more minimal of a code base than glibc, or let's just say, quotation mark, a lot more suckless. Void is quite quotation suckless in philosophy. It doesn't have systemd as it's in a system, but has run it, and it's quite interesting. I myself used to run it version of uh, Artix Linux. <laughs> I'll talk about it in a different video. Now, if we switch over to the website, you can see that it's stable rolling release, meaning it won't break as often as Arch does, although Arch really didn't break on me. I just uh, most of the time accidentally deleted my doc config folder. Let's not talk about it. Yikes. <laughs> also, let me just switch over to the downloads page so you can see what I'm talking about. And as I said before, Void has two different variants and I'll be downloading the XFCE version of Void with GLFC. So I'll be right back once Void has finished downloading, which shouldn't take that long. Alrighty, so... I went ahead and created the virtual machine for Void, and now we're in uh, the virtual machine. And I gave it 2 gigs of RAM and 2 CPU threads, and as you can see I'm in the boot menu. I'll just be real quick into the live environment, and as Void boots, please be sure to let me know how your day is going in the comment section down below. And also, if you haven't joined my Discord server, Unix Zone, be sure to join it. The link should be in the screen at the moment. And also be, I'll, I'll also be sure to keep a link of it in the description down below. And Void, as you can see, Void has booted up pretty fast, but uh, XFCE is going to take a bit, time, bit of time to uh, load up. As I'm in a virtual machine, and on a potato laptop. Life. There we go, Void has started up. But first, let me, of course, uh, fix the display settings to a much more suitable uh, resolution. Let's say, uh, let me see, 16 by 10, no thanks. I'd, I'd rather go for 16 by 9, 1920, no thanks. 1600 I don't have that much I think I was gonna go for uh, 1366 I guess maybe 12 yeah maybe 12 now nah, I'm just gonna go with uh, my regular 1360 I guess I keep this configuration so as you can see I'm in the void live environment now and it's really really minimal let's open the terminal and you can open the terminal as well using Control alt t So let me just zoom in so you guys can see it better, see stuff better. And let's switch over to the root user. And the password for the root user is V-O-I-D-L-I-N-U-X, Void Linux, no capital. And to start up the Void installer, it's really simple. Void installer, where they go. It brought up an end curses type of screen. So keyboard says system keyboard of course I have a US keyboard let me scroll all the way down until I find US it's right here enter to select network Ethernet DHCP yes if you're if you guys are using Wi-Fi you're gonna see it the Wi-Fi stuff source installation I'm gonna use local from ISO image host name is gonna be void VM Locale, of course, it's going to be ENUS UTFA. I have a US keyboard and it's English. So it just makes sense to have ENUS. ENUS UTFA. Time zone. I'm in the Asia Taka region. 
but you guys can choose your specific one. Where is Taka? There you go. Root password. It's gonna set it to this, this user account. Uh, I'm gonna call it Ilham. It's for login username Ilham. Enter password. And then enter password again. And now for the group membership. So I'll be putting my one in, my user in, to video, optical, yes, storage as well. And network, yeah, sure. Actually, nah, and put. And that should be it. That's all I need. Okay. And now for the bootloader, dev VDA. Yours might say SDA, STV, whatever. Use the graphical terminal, of course. Partition disks. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm going to be using CF disk, although you guys can use F disk if you want. I just prefer CF disk because it's easier. Uh, for the label type, it's going to be DOS because master boot record, MBR, and not UEFI. This tutorial will work on UEFI, but if you want to do use UEFI, you should select GPT. But I'll be selecting DOS. Free space, new. No. I'll be giving uh, the VM like 39 gigs. Like 39 gigs of regular storage and one gig swap the rest can be for swap so type is gonna be Linux swap right over right arrow to yes I meant right arrow to right and then are you sure you want to partition, partition the table like are you sure to write the partition table to disk yes now let's put out a CF disk we're done with it file system and mount point over here you're gonna be choosing your file system it's really simple VDA2 is going to be swap, not FAT32, but swap, bruh, swap, yes, and then on VDA1, it's going to be extended 4 and not butterfs, mount point is going to be root, of course, we're going to create a new file system on, yes, I do, now done, and now install, do you want to continue, yes, of course. Anyway guys, I'll be right back once Void has actually finished installing. It may gonna take some time, so yeah, I'll be right back. And as you can see, Void has finished installing. And it seems like the resolution is back to being its old self, so let me quickly fix that. Access to E4 display settings. I want the resolution to be uh, 1366, actually 1360, just to save some RAM system resources keep this configuration and yeah there's not really much of a suite of applications as you can see installed with void because void is very vanilla and lets you build your system by yourself you do however have the basic xfce applications installed the application menu is really really old school like this is giving me windows 98 vibes like you can't lie this is so old and there are a few applications installed as i said the regular web browser then there's settings a lot of other stuff in the settings accessories application finder and stuff graphics ristretto image viewer internet firefox which is always good and then system bulk rename yeah there's just regular xfce apps if we want though, we can install our own preferred suite of applications, which is, yeah, okay, Firefox opened. I don't want it though. So yeah, as I was saying, we can install our own preferred suite of applications, which is going to be a lot easier on the base ISO, which is basically the TTY installer. You know how Arch Linux looks like, how it's kind of similar to the Arch Linux installer, but yeah. Base ISO, so it's a lot easier on the base ISO as it doesn't install a desktop environment or a window manager because it wants us to build the system ourselves just like Arch or Gentoo but you have to compile stuff another thing I should show you guys is how void really works under the hood let's mess around with it some package manager which is called XBPS which by the way as I said before, it stands for X Binary Package System. To install packages, it's really simple. 
sudo xpps dash install and then to sync the repositories repositories is dash s and then the package name let's say i want to install htop because i want to see how much system resources it's using so dash htop and then enter our root password by the way you guys can like i'll show you guys later something xbps is i just like how xbps shows like the size to download and then the required size. like pacman does show the size to download but it doesn't show the size like space available to disk but xbps does and i really like how it, do it does that it's really neat and there you go it's pretty fast so let's check the system resource usage holy cow 314 megabytes <laughs> 314 megabytes of RAM out of the 2 gigs I gave it. And it's not using a, a single kilobyte of the swap. Dang. But obviously the resource usage is going to increase once you start installing programs and enabling services and whatnot. Now, to, inst uh, to update the system, let's also update the system because I really don't know. Well, I'm not going to be updating the system, but... I'll show you guys how to update the system because if you have installed it from the ISO and not from the network, you don't know how old the packages, how old the packages are going to be. So, updating the system is going to be fairly simple. sudo xpps-install and then to sync the repositories dash s and then dash u to update and then if you want to skip the y, you know, the yes or no thing, just add the y flag as well. It's gonna update the repositories and as you can see it's gonna take a while but obviously I'm not interested in updating the system. I'll update it later. And it's here to just get this system up and running. And by default in the base ISO it's gonna be installing the Linux 5.13.19 kernel, which is pretty old. But uh in the repositories there is Linux 5.16 if I'm not mistaken. And also another thing after you guys like update the system, Void recommends doing X check restart, which you need the Xtools package installed for. So sudo xpps dash install and then Xtools. It's pretty lightweight. And then once this has finished installing, and once this has finished installing, Void recommends you to just run X check restart without root privileges but i'm not going to be doing that since i didn't update the system at all so yeah once you have updated the system be sure to uh install x tools and then run x check restart to restart the processes let's also try out you know the xpps query command which is going to search for some software so let's say I want to search for BSPWM. So XPPS query and then dash RS and then BSPWM. And there we go. It is in the repositories. Well, obviously, it'll be it's BSPWM is pretty popular. Let's see if Xmonad is in the repositories. It is. Amazing. What about Sway? Nice, it is. All right, cool. Sure. So yeah, as you can see, it's fairly simple checking if the packages are installed. What about NeoFetch? Good old NeoFetch, it is. Nice. So yeah, it's fairly simple checking the repositories if your desired software is in it or not. Because if it isn't, you're going to have to build it from source. Let's also see how many packages are, are installed in the system by default. So we're going to run xpps query and then dash l and then this. And then WC-L, 518. Dang, son, that's, that's really lightweight, huh? If you want to get the names of the packages installed, we should type XPPS query-L and then that, and then awk, and then these, and then print, inverted commas, and then print, and then dollar sign two to print out the third column. I'm in the second column and as you can see it's really simple to get 
the names and the versions but let's say just want the names of your packages and only so that you can like you can so that you can you know install like, <laughs> direct it to like a file like a .txt file so that you can carry over your system whenever you want with the required you know what I mean <laughs> So to get rid of the version numbers, aka the third column, we should write. Okay, so as I was saying, like you can like carry like you can direct it to let's say packages.txt, and then that, and then you can just carry your entire system wherever you go whenever you want to install void. Bam, just pull up your packages and package names and just install it. To get rid of like the version number, it's gonna be pretty simple as well. We just add this again then the xargs zargs we add xzargs and then dash n1 and then xpps u helper and then this thing has like a feature called get pkg name and only and yeah as you can see it's finding the package names installed in void linux by default so now let's if you want to like direct it to a file so you can carry over your system it's going to be you add this arrow and then packages.txt and now to ch let's check if it actually directed it so cat packages.txt and yeah it's there the only other thing that really does separate void linux is instead of its package manager is run it aka it's in it system and as a lot of people, including me, don't like systemd, we really do appreciate really lightweight in its systems like run it or open RC or S6 even, even S6. Also, let me just check one thing as a recording. Yes, it is nice. So to uh, a lot of the run it commands are really similar to system CTL commands. And also Void's been using run it since forever and as I said, it's pretty easy to use. So those who are familiar with systemd know that you can check the status of a process by using system CTL status and then whatever process, so let's say DHCPCD. Obviously it's not gonna find system CTL since systemd isn't installed. So instead, what you're gonna do in Void is sudo sv status and then the process name. So let's say DHCPCD and then enter your password. And as you can see, it's up. If it says run, it's gonna be up. To start a process, instead of like, you know, as, instead of like start, you write up and then the process name. So DHCPCD and it's gonna be up. To stop a process, instead of writing system CTL kill, where I think stop, this is gonna be like, down. So now it's gonna the DHCPCD is gonna be down. Now if we check the status of it, it's gonna say down, normally up. So let's turn DHCPCD on again. There's also restart, which is, as the name says, just restarts the process. So that's basically it about Void Linux. It's Really, a nice distro, and if you're not familiar with Run It, you should definitely try out Void Linux. Instead of Artix Linux, as Artix expects you to know about Run It or OpenRC. And if you want to try OpenRC, you should try out something else before you, you know. Anyway, guys, hope you found this video useful. If you did, be sure to like the video and subscribe to my channel, and turn on notifications so you never miss an upload, as well as helping me out helping me grow in the Unix swimming community. And until next time, stay safe, stay well, peace.